Hey everyone, it's time for another news roundup. This is my third one in the last week, and it'll be my last one for a while. Um, we've got a lot to cover today, mostly Star Wars Celebration stuff, but a couple more things on the top and then a couple trailers to do afterwards as well. Starting with the first couple stuff, uh, Nathan Fillion has been cast in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which is pretty cool. Uh, probably a minor role since there's already so many characters in that movie. Next up, the actors behind Vanessa and Colossus are returning in Deadpool 3. Um, this makes sense. I'm looking forward to that. And then finally, uh, James Gunn's animated Creature Commando series, which we talked about yesterday, has cast most of its characters. So going through that, we've got Frank Grillo as Rick Flagg Sr., which is cool. He's a really good actor. Uh, Maria Bakalova as Ilana Rostovic, which is also cool. She was great in Borat 2, and I'm excited to see her in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Um, Indira Varma as the bride. She was a standout in Obi-Wan Kenobi, so this is awesome. Zoe Chow as Nina Mazurki. I'm not as familiar with her, but this is cool. Alan Tudyk as Dr. Phosphorus, which is awesome. Alan Tudyk is a great actor. Um, David Harbour as Eric Frankenstein. Again, David Harbour, great actor. And then Sean Gunn, of course, returning as Weasel. And then also voicing G.I. Robot, which is cool. And then Steve A.G. will be returning as Johnny Conomos from Peacemaker, which is really cool. Um, this is a great cast. I'm really excited to hear their voice work and then eventually see them in live action once that transfer happens. But this is really cool, and I'm very much looking forward to this show. Moving on, let's go through all the Star Wars Celebration news, starting with the Acolyte. First of all, they did show exclusive footage at Star Wars Celebration. I may or may not have caught a glimpse of the leaked trailer on YouTube. And I mean, it looks incredible. Um, as much as I love the Favreau Filoni verse, just like with Andor, I'm excited for something different, something with a whole new creative team, a whole new time period. Everything I've heard about the show, every interview, every synopsis, everything I've heard just makes me more and more excited. The trailer was incredible. It looks so good, and I cannot wait for this show. Also, we know that Juna Sutamo, who played Chewbacca in the sequel trilogy and in Solo, will be playing a Wookiee Jedi in the show, which I believe is the first Wookiee Jedi we've seen in live action, which is very cool. Um, we've had like uh, the character in Bad Batch and in Clone Wars. I'm forgetting his name right now. Buryaga, also in the Star Wars High Republic books. And talking about the Star Wars High Republic books, Rebecca Henderson will be playing Vernestra Rowe, who is a major character in those books, but she will be playing her in The Acolyte, which is really awesome. That level of interconnectedness, the fact that they're directly taking characters from the book, the fact that they're going to be referencing the books, the care they're putting into this is really awesome, and I cannot wait. Um, I'm very much looking forward to The Acolyte. Moving on, for Skeleton Crew... We learned that Carrie Condon was cast. Uh, she is a fantastic actress. I'm really excited about this. She was great in Banshees of Inishirin. We also learned that Jude Law is playing a uh, an escaped Jedi, I think, from Order 66, which is fine with me. I know a lot of people really don't like how we keep introducing more and more escaped Jedi. I don't really mind it because when you consider the numbers of how many Jedi there were out there across the galaxy, it makes sense that a lot of them would have survived. So it doesn't bother me. We also got our lineup of directors for Skeleton Crew, which we already knew John Watts, but we also got the Daniels, our best director Oscar winners this year. David Lowry, which is really interesting. Jake Schreier, who's doing Thunderbolts. Of course, Bryce Dallas Howard, who's uh, one of the, I guess, standouts of the Favreau Filoniverse. And then a new favorite, Lee Isaac Chung, who just did a great job with Mandalorian. I think it was episode three he did. So this is really exciting. And I am very much looking forward to Skeleton Crew. It's got a great team behind it. Next up, we've got Ahsoka. Lars Mikkelsen is confirmed as Grand Admiral Thrawn. And if you know me, if you've listened to me for a while, you know that I'm not a big fan of fan casting. I don't do it often. I don't like to fan cast. But I've always said... My one exception to that rule is Lars Mikkelsen as Thrawn. I always thought he would be perfect for the role, and I would have been upset if it was anybody but him. So I am so glad it is him. Also for Ahsoka, we got our directors. Obviously Dave Filoni. Steph Green, who did probably the best episode of Book of Boba Fett. Peter Ramsey, who did a good job with Mandalorian recently. 
Jennifer Getzinger, who's a new one. I'm not familiar with her. And then Gita Patel, who I'm also not familiar with. And then Rick Famuyiwa, who just did today's episode of Mandalorian, which is quite possibly the best episode of the entire show. So those directors are awesome. And then the big thing with Ahsoka is that we got the trailer. Um, What can I say? It looks amazing. Rosario Dawson is perfect in this role. Natasha Lou Bordizzo looks amazing as Sabine. I loved seeing live action Lothal. I mean, Star Wars Rebel fans are really eating good. Um, Chopper looked great. Thrawn from the backside looked great. Um, we got like Ray Stevenson doing, I don't know what he was. And then this other actress with red lightsabers looked like Inquisitors, even orange lightsabers. There was some visuals that looked like the world between worlds. Really, really interesting stuff. Um, we got a glimpse at Ezra, which looks cool. We got live action Hera. That's the one thing I'm probably not fully sold on. I'm not sure how I feel about her appearance, but I'm going to have to see it in action and in context, and then I'll make a final judgment. This just looks awesome. I can't wait for Ahsoka. Moving on to Andor. There wasn't much Andor news. They did show footage there, which I caught a glimpse of. And again, it looks phenomenal. I loved season one of Andor. Can't wait for season two. And then the other news is that Kino Loy, Andy Serkis, is returning in season two. And this is something I'm a little mixed on. His ending in season one was so impactful, so shocking, and just like an all-time Star Wars moment that I don't want them to risk lessening that impact or risk really messing it up at all. So I really don't know how I feel about him coming back. It's highly, highly dependent on the execution. We'll just have to wait and see. But if anybody can do it in a satisfying way, Tony Gilroy can. So I'm excited for that. Next up, we learned that Tales of the Jedi is renewed for season two. This is awesome. I loved Tales of the Jedi season one. If you listen to my review, you know that. Also, Bad Batch has been renewed for a third and final season. Wolf will be in it, and then Fennec Shand will be in it. Uh, First of all, Bad Batch season two, I haven't had a chance to review yet, but it has been phenomenal. The second half of season two is some of the best Star Wars animation ever. I'm really excited that it's coming back. No cancellations, nothing like that. They get to tell their full story. They know it's the final season. They're going to make it satisfying. And I'm just excited for that. And then Wolf coming back is awesome. It makes sense. We've seen Gregor. We've seen Rex. Now we just need to see Wolf to complete uh, the ones who survived in Star Wars Rebels. And then Fennec Shand was a highlight of Bad Batch season one. Ming-Na Wen is a great voice actress, and I am so excited to see her back. Next up, we got a trailer for Star Wars Vision Season 2. And I mean, this looks incredible. I can't wait. Um, I don't have much to say besides the fact that I'm really, really excited for this, and it's going to be awesome, and this was a great trailer. Moving on, we've got three Star Wars movies that were announced. Interestingly enough, no mentions of the Patty Jenkins movie, and of the Taika Waititi movie, and of the Kevin Feige movie which means they're probably on the back burner for now, which I'm not surprised by. But what we did learn is that James Mangold is directing a Star Wars movie set in the deep past, 2,500 years before the current timeline, and it is described as a biblical epic such as Ten Commandments about the dawning of the Force and the beginning of the Jedi. First of all, James Mangold, one of my favorite directors, can't wait for his Swamp Thing, also can't wait for Indiana Jones. I think he's also doing a Bob Dylan biopic. He's a busy man. Ford vs. Ferrari, Logan, he did another Wolverine movie. He's done so much good stuff, and um, I just can't wait. And then also just this premise, they're finally exploring new timelines, taking risks, a biblical epic about the dawning of the Force. I mean, there is so much potential there. It could either be the best thing of all time or an absolute train wreck. I mean, I trust James Mangold, and this sounds awesome, and I can't wait. Next up, we've talked about the Charmin Obey Chinoy movie but we finally know more details about it. We know that Stephen Knight has replaced Damon Lindelof as the writer, which I gotta say is a little disappointing. Damon Lindelof is super talented. Stephen Knight, I haven't loved everything he's done, but he's done a few good things, so I'm a little mixed on that. But um, but what we do know about this movie is that it takes place years after the sequel trilogy. Finally, Star Wars is moving into the future. I'm excited about that. And it is about Daisy Ridley, who will be returning as Rey, training the new generation of Jedi. I know the internet hates Rey, but I think with new writers, with a different creative team, she can be a great character. There's so much potential there. And I think also training a new generation of Jedi 
there's also some potential there. But the thing is, they can't be training a new generation of the Jedi by the same rules. There has to be some big differences. There has to be a big shift in how what the Jedi look like, in their beliefs, their religious dogma. All this stuff needs to be different or else I'm going to be disappointed. We can't just repeat the same stuff over and over. I'm going to need some very clear changes and something new and original with how they handle the Jedi. Um, that's my one thing. But other than that, I am very much looking forward to this movie with that big asterisk next to it. Finally, they announced a Dave Filoni movie, which is the merging, the big conclusion of the Favreau Filoni verse. Um, I think we all predicted this. I knew this was probably coming, although I thought maybe John Favreau would direct it. So it's pretty cool that Dave Filoni's doing it. I'm excited to see how all these storylines come together, especially after this newest Mandalorian episode, which blew me away and gave us some really cool direction for the show. And uh, this is just great. I can't wait for this. And that brings me to the end of Star Wars Celebration. Lots of good stuff. Lots of really exciting stuff. The highlight for me was probably the Acolyte. Can't wait for that show. But I'm really excited for everything else as well. Let's close off with some trailers. We got a new trailer for Secret Invasion. And again, this looks really great. I'm loving the tone, the intensity. It doesn't look very jokey and comedic. It looks like a grounded, gritty spy thriller through and through, and I can't wait for that. We also got the trailer for Blue Beetle, and this looks pretty good as well. Looks like a lot of fun. It has the potential to be something really charming and well done, so I'm excited for that. We got a new trailer for Across the Spider-Verse, and I don't have much to say besides the fact that this just kind of confirms what excitement was already there. This trailer didn't do much to make me more excited, but it didn't make me less excited either. It looks amazing, and I can't wait for it. We got a new trailer for Barbie. This was so well done. There were two standout moments in this trailer. One, when Barbie, Margot Robbie as Barbie, takes her shoes off and her feet are kind of already elevated. That shot, I know it's something small, but it is so clever and really original and creative and just interesting. And it immediately tells me, okay, there's someone behind this movie with vision who is clever, who has thought this through. And immediately this movie is set apart from a lot of these other ones. I think that shot is an indicator of the amount of cleverness and originality and just how good this movie will be. Also, the other one was the uh, conversation between Barbie and Ken, where he's like, oh, I'm going to sleep over and blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm talking about? And I really love that brief thing. First of all, just comedically, it was really funny, really clever. It's a great joke. Second of all, the line delivery was so good on both sides. If that's an indication of the humor of this movie, of the comedic delivery, and of the performances, this is going to be one of the best of the year. And um, I genuinely cannot wait for this movie. It looks awesome. Moving on, new trailer for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. This looks really good. Can't wait for this. Not much else to say. Uh, new trailer for The Continental, which is the John Wick spinoff on Peacock. And this looks really intriguing. I am very curious if this show is going to be able to live up to the John Wick movies without Keanu Reeves, without Chad Stileski, especially action-wise. This has the potential to be something great, and I'll definitely be watching it. But I'm more curious than I am excited because I don't know if they'll be able to live up to it. Finally, we got our first trailer for the Marvels. And, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of Captain Marvel. I think it's just kind of mediocre. It's not great, but it's not bad either. But this trailer felt like a breath of fresh air. This is probably, I mean, this trailer is better than the entirety of Captain Marvel. The comedy is great. Iman Vellani as Kamala Khan continues to stand out. Um, the humor, the tone, the style, the premise, the switching of characters every time they use their powers looks really intriguing. Great action scene potential. Um, the performances, um, just the whole thing had such personality to it such style and immediately I go similarly to Barbie okay I can feel a director here with vision with style with personality this looks like a lot of fun this was an amazing trailer because my excitement for this movie doubled or tripled or something I cannot wait for this this looks great and um, that wraps up this news roundup what do you think of all this news what do you think of the Star Wars celebration stuff are you excited for all these shows and movies what are you most excited for what are you least excited for did you like the Marvels trailer as much as I did? Let me know in the comments, the email, the voicemail, or the form. And all those links are in the description. 
Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.